Hey everybody, Jerry Wagner here, Vice President of HVAC Technical Training. This is the sixth in a series of videos to coincide with the Grease Sapphire Installation Manual. Although we are using the Sapphire as our working example, all Grease Mini Split products are similar in their installation requirements. Let's turn to page number 14 of the installation manual for piping installation. In this application, we're mounting the indoor unit on an outside wall. This is preferred for ease of installation. This allows us to simply extend the refrigerant pipe connections and the condensate drain of the indoor unit through the wall. Use the mounting bracket diagrams and dimensions on page number 11 to find and mark the proper location to drill the hole through the wall. In this application, our refrigerant piping, drain hose, and electrical cord are all going to exit the indoor unit from the right hand side. There are two critical dimensions that we have to look for at the mounting bracket diagram from page number 11. The first is that the center of the hole that we will drill needs to be five and a half inches to the right of the right hand leg of the mounting bracket. The next dimension which you have to watch for is that the bottom of the hole you drill must be even with the end of the right hand leg of the mounting bracket. I can't stress this enough. Before you drill that hole, measure and measure again. You really have one shot at getting this right. If the hole you drill drops below the end of that right hand leg of the bracket, it's not going to be covered when you mount the indoor unit on the wall and that's going to be a major problem. In our application the refrigerant piping is going directly out the back of the unit but you do have an alternate to that. You can send the refrigerant piping out to the left or the right hand side of the indoor unit. There are knockouts provided to facilitate that. It's now time to drill the two and three quarter inch hole in the wall. When drilling the hole it's best to have a bit of a downward pitch to help facilitate the gravity drain of the condensate. Wall sleeves can be helpful but they're not absolutely necessary. What I'm using here is an escutcheon on the outside wall which can later be covered by something like the Slim Duck product from Rector Seal. You want to be sure that you're making a weather tight, water tight seal on the outside wall. We don't want any moisture getting to the interior wall. I'm a big fan of expandable foam. Use it to fill in the gaps where the refrigerant piping, the drain hose, and the electrical cord exit through the wall. Okay, let's move on to page number 15 of the installation manual, and this should be a duh. Use refrigerant grade piping only for your line sets. Do not remove the protective caps on the refrigerant lines coming from the indoor unit. Do not remove the protective caps on the line set. and do not open the service valves of the outdoor unit. We are not ready for that yet. We need to keep the refrigerant tubing free of dirt and any contaminants. We also need to insulate the two refrigerant lines independently of each other. That's pretty standard for prefabricated line sets. The installation manual at this point tells us to bind the refrigerant pipes, the condensate hose, and the interconnecting cable between the indoor and outdoor unit. Put them all together with zip ties in 12 inch intervals. We're really not ready for that yet. We'll come back to that later. Well alright, it's time to mount the indoor unit on the wall. First we have to route the refrigerant pipe, the condensate line, and the interconnecting cable through the hole in the wall.
carefully bend the refrigerant tubing coming from the indoor unit in the direction that you need to go. Using a bending tool can help to avoid kinks. In this application, we're only going to need the minimum 10 foot line set. So we'll measure out 10 feet of the quarter inch liquid line and make our cut. And we'll measure out 10 feet of the half inch suction line and make our cut. Well, it's time to attach the factory flare nuts that came with the indoor unit. If you remember in the second video in this series, I recommended the Yellow Jacket Deluxe Flaring Tool. We need to flare the quarter inch liquid and the half inch suction line. Yellow Jacket has a great video on YouTube demonstrating how to use the tool. I strongly suggest you watch it. The indoor unit comes pressurized with nitrogen from the factory. You need to release the nitrogen charge. If you do not sense any pressure coming out of the evaporator, there's probably a leak and contact your greed distributor immediately. The installation manual suggests applying small amount of refrigerant oil to the flare connection on the refrigerant pipes. That's fine, but frankly that's old school. Gree now approves the use of Nylog Blue. Refrigeration Technologies, the people who make Nylog, have a great video on YouTube. I suggest you watch it. Okay, time to torque the connections for the refrigerant lines from the indoor unit to the correct torque specification. We'll start with the quarter inch liquid line. We need to torque it to 10 to 13 foot pounds. You may remember from the second video one of the torque wrenches that I recommended was the Black Max Torque Wrench by CPS. I tend to lean toward the higher torquing value on the smaller diameter tubing like the quarter inch liquid line. So I'm going to set the torque wrench to 13 foot pounds. The torque specification for the half inch suction line is 36 to 45 foot pounds. Now on the larger diameter tubing, I tend to lean toward the lower torque number. So I'm going to set the torque wrench to 38 foot pounds. Okay, moving on to page number 16 of the installation guide. We need to remember that under tightening and over tightening may damage the flare connection and cause a leak. If you remember, in the box with the indoor unit, there was a piece of Armaflex insulation. Trim that to the size you need to cover the refrigerant connections of the indoor unit. Okay, it's time to remove the service valve cover to access the service valves. We need to carefully bend the refrigerant lines coming from the indoor unit so that they mate up with the service valves of the outdoor unit. Okay, well the next few steps are essentially a repeat of what we did at the refrigerant line connections of the indoor unit. I like to use the flare nuts that come with the outdoor unit, so I'm going to cut off the flares of the prefabricated line set and reflare using the nuts that came with the outdoor unit. And just like we did at the indoor unit connections, we're going to apply Nylog Blue 
to both sides of the flare at the quarter inch and the half inch flared connections. And lastly, just like we did at the indoor unit connections, we're going to torque the quarter inch line to 13 foot pounds and the half inch connection to 38 foot pounds. Before we move on, I just want to point out that the half inch by 3 8 inch line set adapter that comes with the indoor unit is not going to be used. This adapter would only be used if you were connecting the Sapphire indoor unit to a Multi 21 Plus outdoor unit in a multi-zone application. With the refrigerant piping done, we can now move on to page number 17 and the drain piping. One of the advantages of the Sapphire indoor unit is that you can move the condensate drain from the left hand side to the right hand side. Remove the drain plug on the right hand side. It'll be just underneath the refrigerant pipes coming out of the indoor unit. Locate the drain tube on the left hand side of the indoor unit. Twist the tube counterclockwise to remove it. And now we simply move the drain tube over to the right hand side fitting, turning it clockwise in order to attach it. And now most important, don't forget to move the drain plug over to the fitting on the left hand side. If you forget to do that, it's going to be a mess. The Sapphire indoor unit uses a simple gravity drain in order to remove the condensate. A mechanical pump can be adapted to the indoor unit in the field and we'll discuss that at another time. You have a number of different choices with running the condensate drain. One of them is to use a product like this from Diversitech which mates up perfectly with the tubing coming out of the indoor unit. In our application I'm simply going to take the tubing coming from the indoor unit and insert it into a piece of 3 quarter inch PVC and run that PVC all the way to the bottom of the wall. The two foot piece of drain tubing that comes on the indoor unit is pre-insulated. So that's all the insulation I need in this particular application. And a reminder that this is a gravity drain, so it must have a downward pitch, and it cannot raise upward anywhere in the run. And lastly, the condensate has to be routed so that it ends up in a location that isn't going to cause a hazard, like an ice spot on a walkway. And as an option, we can use the Rector Seal Slim Duck product in order to tidy things up. Well, all right, that's it for now. The next video is going to deal with the power and wiring installation. Thanks, and talk to you soon.